Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Welcome to this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time on this also weekend of our national commemoration of the 4th of July. Let's listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you reveal them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned to the graduates of Columbus High School this last weekend at the baccalaureate mass, the word educate means uh, from its Latin roots to be led out, specifically to be led out of ourselves and our lack of knowledge into a fuller knowledge and a fuller life, uh, often through the efforts of a teacher. Well, 1978, when I was 15 years old and in 10th grade, I had no idea that my world would be changed by the efforts of such a teacher Miss Karen Fleetwood, who taught us a course on Shakespeare. How could I have known that this playwright's genius was so extraordinary and that he would be a, a guide to lead me out of the darkness of ignorance in my life into the splendid banquet of words and imageries that comes from the Bard of Avon? I don't remember much about high school, but I do remember uh, Miss Fleetwood introducing us to Shakespeare's play, Measure for Measure. It's a comedy of errors and confusion, uh, misunderstandings, uh, hidden personalities, and all kinds of marriage situations that were unclear. Well, I left the experience of reading that play and much changed and venturing with her direction into a lifelong joy of literature. And it was a joy that uh, in April of 2015, some 37 years later, as I took on the major project for the 10th of my 12 courses in the completion of a master's degree in English, that very same play that had changed my life that almost four decades before. So thanks to Ms. Fleetwood for leading me into a fuller, more joyful life. So is it, it is with literature, so it is with our faith. If we're to be let out of darkness, that is to be educated into a fuller knowledge of our faith, we'll need teachers. And so I invite, that we, I invite us to consider two of our greatest teachers. Our faith calls them doctors, from the Latin word docere, meaning to teach. First, we'll look at St. Augustine, who lived from 354 to 430, and then St. Therese of the Sioux from 1873 to 1897 together offer us a rather complete understanding of God and his ways. First, the story of St. Augustine at the beach. The story is told that Augustine was walking on the beach contemplating the mystery of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There he saw a small boy who had dug a hole into the sand and then was taking a bucket or some kind of container and taking water from the sea, dumping it into the hole in the sand. Augustine asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going to pour the entire ocean into this whole. Augustine responded, that's impossible for the whole ocean uh, to fit into the hole you've made. And the boy replied, and you cannot fit the Trinity into your little brain. That's a smart kid. And the story concludes by saying that the boy vanished because St. Augustine considered him to be an angel. So this teaching from uh, this great teacher of our faith, St. Augustine, is that we'll never possess a complete knowledge of God, and only pride will lead us to try to understand God in his fullness. It's certainly not possible by our mere efforts. The second teacher, St. Therese of the Sioux and her little way. This Carmelite sister, unknown to the world in her short life, at first felt a strong desire to the missions and martyrdom to tell others about Jesus, but in the end she ended up professing her life as a Carmelite sister with a life of rigorous prayer. Yet, even though she found herself in the convent, she could still continue to search for her specific vocation, her specific, specific role in the church. And then she um, said that an encounter with the scriptures finally uh, solved her uh, confusion when she read that famous passage from the 12th and 13th chapters of the first 
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, where she saw Paul describing all the many gifts embodied in the church and then finally declaring that love was the greatest of all these gifts. And she said, I quote, love appeared to be my, the hinge for my vocation. I saw and realized that love sets off the bonds of all, the, all vocations, that love is everything. Then nearly ecstatic with supreme joy in my soul, I proclaimed, Oh Jesus, my love, at last I found my calling. My calling is love. So Teresa's great teaching for us is that our final and fullest meaning in life is to show others the love of God. Well, these two great teachers reveal to us essential knowledge of our faith. First, Augustine teaches us against pride that somehow we'll figure God out and understand God fully. And then Therese teaches us that we can find the essence of our life's calling, our life's purpose, by showing the love of God to others. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us that he will need to be the one who will lead us and guide us. He says, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned ones, you, are, you, uh, learned it, you have revealed them to little ones. So if we're to know the ways of God, Jesus is telling us we'll need to be taught. We'll need to be taught by God himself and taught by his followers, the great teachers like Therese and St. Augustine. So in our life's constant search for meaning, we arrive, spent after our efforts, at the altar, the altar of the word and the altar of sacrament at this mass. There we remember the words of Jesus, come to me all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Our labor for meaning, purpose in life, is given rest if we rest in the Lord. Here is where our constantly searching hearts and minds need to be educated, that is to be led out to the end of our search, where God, who is love, desires in his mercy not to leave us in the dark, but to reveal himself to us. If we'll but be his humble children and students, he does the work, he finds us. We only need to rest in him and then share his love with others. God bless you and have a good week.